So who's the tank? Who, who Who's the tank? Well, who is the tank? No, 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 no. I mean, who is the tank? What's his name? Who? Who is the tank? This is a wonderful bit from um, the Aben Costello, who's on first, but done in, in video game history. Great video. Uh, 61 million views in, in 14 years. It's amazing. Anyways, they, they raise a more valid question than ever, which is literally who is the tank? In a fantasy setting, who is the tank? What does the tank do? How do they tank? How do they hold aggro? Is there an aggro system at all? Is there something that they, they need to do that you know, functions like the Holy Trinity? That's a question I'm going to tackle today. Um, because we've got Season of Discovery coming out in literally less than almost a week now. And we've got new tanks coming to the vanilla experience. But it's, it's more than just World of Warcraft. This is also like... D&D, another fantasy series, the, the holy trinity of tank, DPS, healer. And what does that all entail? Is it good for gamers? Is it bad for gamers? Is it good for communities? Is it bad for communities? Um, I think more or less it's very good for community communities. I think it's really, really good for group people because it sets uh, certain roles that some people are more attracted to than others. I have always been attracted to the tanking mindset, being a tank holding aggro, uh, being the person who's controlling how the party engages into combat, the strategist, allowing other people to worry about the healing and the damage. It's just more fun. It's just a lot of fun. And I really, really, really click with that. I don't really, I don't click at all with healing. I don't click at all with support classes. I have, um, I, I'm pretty good at DPS, but I always prefer being the frontline person taking the damage. So what's my favorite classes to play? My favorite class to play is usually a rogue. So how does that work? Well, that that's that's the question I'm, I want to ask. So with Season of Discovery coming out, they've added rogues, warlocks, shamans, and paladins to the tanking list. Now, paladins, they wear plate. And in a fantasy setting like D&D, they are the holy warrior going in, waving around usually a big sword and doing a lot of damage. I think I really like that that uh, uh, iconography, that that class uh, fantasy, that 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 click that you have with being the holy warrior going in and and you know taking all the attention and holding back the the tides of darkness while people you know do other things around you. I really like that mechanic, and it works really really well in D and D. But for the longest time in World of Warcraft, in the in the vanilla experience of the game, you just couldn't do that. But now in the you know, classic plus, basically what we're getting, you can. So does that make sense? Most people are, are pretty okay with it. Most people think, yeah, you know what? It's fine. They wear plate. They have a big shield. Like, why not? It just, it just makes sense. Shamans, they wear mail. And in a lot of fantasy settings, they're elementalists. They're not, um, you know, they're not really, uh, you know, they use a lot of magic. They use a lot of like ancestral stuff. They don't, they don't typically, you don't really think of them going in and, and wading into a combat and using heavy strikes and, and stuff like that to hold aggro. But when you think about it a little bit differently, Earth Elemental, anybody, is basically a tank. I mean, the Earth, the shields, the 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 giant boulders that you can cause, those are those all really fit into the tank role in so many different ways. So I think it totally makes sense for the tanks, for the shamans to be tanks. It, it really does work. It, it really does fit quite well. So what about rogues? I mean, rogues typically, they typically wear leather. They typically very, you know, stick to the shadows. Do they tank? Do they tank well? Are they going to tank well? Well, I think in Season of Discovery, they are going to tank marvelously well, and they're going to be a lot of fun to tank. Uh, they might have a little spiky healing, but I think it's actually going to be not that bad because we're getting new items into the game which are going to are going to allow you to really express your character growth in new ways that you didn't have in the, the old school of the game. But even in the old school game, there's a couple of things that really make sense for rogues and really make sense for them to tank. First of all is their evasion. Their parry rate is ridiculously high. Their dodge rate is insanely high. Um... So right away there, you have this avoidance tank that's kind of like really is kind of a cool uh, way to play. I personally really like it. But when you add in some other flavors into the game, 
you really get some cool stuff. And some of this stuff is already in their kit. Their kit showcases a uh, ghostly strike. Now, ghostly strike is an ability that hits for a lot of damage, but it gives you evasion after it. After it lands, you get several long seconds of, of dodge bonuses and that turning you more and more into a ghost or an apparition as you're fighting an opponent. And that's kind of really cool. That really does work. You're harder to hit. You're utilizing, I think, hopefully, um, you know, more, more smoke screens, more things like that. I think those are easy, gimme concepts for rogue tanking, especially when you think about it more as like the uh, Johnny Depp type pirate, right? You've got, you're, he's walking into a room, he's holding everybody's attention and he's using luck, guile, and just being hard to catch as a way to tank in some cases and in some, some battles, a lot of enemies. And I think that really fits in, in World of Warcraft. You have Repost, which is not just a uh, World of Warcraft thing, but that whole duelist thing from D&D. The duelist idea of like, you know, you know, you and me, we're going to duel. And you're using feints, you're using reposts, you're using dodges, and you're fighting somebody, you're tanking somebody to the face. This is, this is what I think the rogue was built for in a lot of cases, as well as being a damage dealer. But in a lot of cases, this just allows some more expression as to what kind of tank you want to play. And I really like this idea. I really do. And it's something that I really enjoy a lot. My favorite Skyrim character is a sneaky, two-handed, tanky character who just goes in, opens with like, you know, decapitating somebody usually, and then you just go in and you just hold aggro over the room while your companions do other stuff. I really like that idea. I really do enjoy it in D&D settings and a couple other settings. So I think this is something that that it really does fit in, in class fantasy because it's not just the rogue. It's the swashbuckler. It's the combat rogue. It's the person who throws down a target dummy pops up and holds attention while they go doing while they go and do some other stuff those things are already in the game it's just they've never really been utilized in the proper way to allow rogues to actually tank and i and i really do think rogues should actually be tanks i think in retail that the rogue uh really missed out on this opportunity because they had it a lot of really cool kit items for this and we did utilize them in vanilla. There were a bunch of guilds that utilized rogue tanks quite well because their threat was just insane, especially when they got Thunder Fury. So it just works. And it's the whole idea of like mono mono, like fighting, dueling one on one while you have, you know, 39 other people hitting the character from the back. It's, it's really, it really is quite engaging. It is really cool and it's really fun. But now this brings me to the last one. What about clothies? Warlocks. A warlock. Why would a warlock be tanking? And again, we kind of hit this thing where, yeah, it honestly, to me, it makes sense. First of all, in World of Warcraft and in D&D, every character basically tanks because they're always fighting and they're always combating something, especially when you're playing by yourself or alone or in single player. It's it's always there as a concept. You're fighting somebody else. You are the tank. You're also the DPS and the healer in a lot of those cases. But really what I think we're looking at here is we're looking at the ability for a clothy to do something that's that fits their kit. What is the Warlock's kit? The Warlock's kit is filling themselves up with, in this case, fell energy or demonic energy. And that gives you a couple things. That gives you, that can give you you could easily get tougher skin, harder armor. Um, one of the old uh, classes from from uh, the, that old MMO... Um, Age of Conan. You could turn from a clothy wearing one-handed weapon thing into this monstrous uh, uh, creature that could tank and take a lot of damage and stuff like that. It's like that that kind of works in the Warlock's case because you've you've got all these demonic packs, you've got fire armor, you've got fell armor, you've got uh, a bunch of resistances, a bunch of armor, a bunch of other things, and they're all feeding in to, to help this concept, to help this idea of you being a monster that you turn into a monster and you're able to just you know, wreak havoc in a melee format, hitting things, crushing things, taking damage, and having that that insane attention of, of lighting the entire um, uh, field of battle up into fire, and using 
those kinds of attacks to really draw attention and pull attention into yourself and really just going ham in the that department of causing chaos so that people look at you and need to take you down. For so long, we have been fighting bosses in World of Warcraft where you're fighting a boss, you're fighting a character, and they're not a warrior with a shield. In most cases, most fights, most tank fights, that's not really not, that's not what's going on. Sometimes you're fighting giant creatures, but if those characters, if, if you're fighting casters who can, who are, you know, using magic and stuff to attack you, why can't the player do the same thing? Why is it only restricted to the NPCs? Why is it only restricted to the boss fights? Why not open up tanking and the kits that you can have for that for more scenarios and trading off that damage or that um, that support magic uh, for more defensive stuff and utilizing that you know more and more towards certain scenarios. So do I think that these tanks work in World of Warcraft, work in an MMO? I think they, they really do work. And again, they have worked in the past. We used a lot of Warlock tanks in the past in very many scenarios because it worked, because it, it worked really well. And instead of giving us the tools to explore that, they went down this path where they said, no, DPS only DPSs, tanks do almost no damage whatsoever. And, and it really did get quite bad in a couple of, of iterations of the game where it was just impossible. If you if you were prot, you just, you just didn't kill anything very fast. Doing any quest was a long chore because your damage was so minimal that you really couldn't do anything. Only, only sadists level prot warriors in prot through classic it's just it's just something that's so rarely done because it doesn't it doesn't feel good to take on you know two enemies and five minutes later you can't finally kill them it, not when dps are doing it in less than 20 seconds it's ridiculous and it's a bit of an exaggeration but still it's not something that's terribly fun so opening this up i think will open up some more opportunities allow us to experience kind of a different way and a different mindset of looking at characters and this brings us back to more of a traditional our role play dungeons and dragons like encounter where you have a character and you can really experiment with that character you can make them fill multiple roles while still holding to the concept of the trinity of still holding to the concept of having a tank having dps and having healers because it's a mechanic that works really really well and it works really really well in groups so in in season of discovery what do you think do rogue tanks make sense do warlock tanks make sense do shaman takes tanks make sense do you think that this is going to hurt the experience or is it going to improve the experience for everybody? Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'm going to be making some guides on why rogue tanks are actually going to be a lot of fun. Before you go, why not check out some of the other entertaining and enriching gaming content we have here at the Triple S League, like Maximum News, our weekly gaming news podcast hosted by Max Derrett. You'll also find comedy, reviews, and lore videos, and the description has links to our other channels, like Scenometry, where I humorously overthink TV and movies. Oh